So next thing we're going to learn about is percentage composition. So we all know how to work out a percentage in a test. You know, if you got 35 out of 35, you got 100%. If you got 30 out of 35, you got from the calculator. If you got 30 out of 35, what would be my percentage? Sorry? A bit higher than that. 30 out of 35. 85% roughly. Okay, you know how to work this out. Same idea with working out the percentage composition of a compound. Where we're getting with this is we don't normally calculate percentage composition. We can use analytical techniques to find the percentage composition. So what percentage is copper, what percentage is sulfur, and what percentage is oxygen, for example. And from that we calculate what its formula is most likely to be. We'll get into that later. We're going to work it out this way first. Now if I look at copper sulfur, you could infer that there are six atoms there, so copper is one sixth of that, so it's 16.7%. But it doesn't quite work that way, because copper is a darn sight heavier than sulfur and oxygen, so it doesn't actually work that way. Instead what we do is we work out the molar masses and the molar mass of the whole thing. So, if we know copper, and we've got this in the back of our books, so I'll get you guys to call these out, we know that copper is 63.55 grams per mole, and sulfur is 32.06 grams per mole, and oxygen is 0.00 grams per mole. Okay. Then we can use these numbers to work out what percentage of this is sulfur, what percentage is copper, what percentage is oxygen. So, if I assume that I only have one mole of this, it makes all of those grams instead of grams per mole. If I make that assumption, this becomes quite easy. So, in here I've got, in one mole of copper sulfate, I've got one mole of copper. One mole of sulfur and four moles of oxygen. So my first thing to do is to work out the molar mass which is equal to the sum of the relative atomic masses. So that plus that plus four times that. Four because there's four in its uh, formula. All right, and I'm gonna get a value for that, which is gonna be very, very important. 159.61 grams per mole. Okay, working out percentage composition is actually not too hard. Let's say we want to find the percentage of copper in copper sulfate. All I do is go, oh, okay, well it's 63.55 of that 159.61. Things are like a test answer. So the whole test is out of 159.61. Very precise test. Um, and you got 63.55. Very precise answers, obviously what would you get? So the percentage copper equals 63.55 over 159.61 times 100 to get it into our percentage. And again, I'm going to rely on you wonderful people with calculators. 39.83%. Now the thing I really like there is that if you notice, Everything in here is given the four numbers. Ignore this one, because it's just an Everything is given four numbers, so we are limited to four significant figures. Our answer has one, two, three, four numbers in it. So that's it. All of these are what we call four significant figures. And so is the answer, which is really important. As part of the excellence criteria, you need to make sure that you only give answers to the number of significant figures Sorry, the lowest number of significant figures in the data you've got. All of these were given four. This one was five, but that's irrelevant because these ones are only to four. Right? So finding percentage composition isn't too hard. But we're just going to do one more quickly to make sure we've got our head around it. It was easy for copper because there was only one of them. But what about oxygen? So we're now going to find the percentage of oxygen in copper sulfate. So for this one here, we need to go, how many oxygens are in copper sulfate? And there's four of them. So, I've already got my molar mass, don't need to calculate that again. The percentage is equal to 4 times 16.00 is 
because there's four oxygen divided by 159.61. And again, those arms calculators will tell me that is 40.10. 40 and there you go. So notice that if there's more than one in there, you need to allow for that. You're not saying what percentage is just one oxygen in this. You're saying what is the total oxygen percentage in there. All right, now by simple maths, that plus that subtracted from that, you can actually work out pulse Or you could go 3206 over that again times 100. Nice. You get a percentage button rather than the equal, so that'll work. And quite simply that's percentage composition. The trick for us and where we're going to head to tomorrow is going the other way. Where I give you the percentages and you have to work out what the formula is. Alright, so that's where we're headed tomorrow. So up next, as it were, is what we call empirical formula. And then from that, we work out molecular formula. But as I say, that's not today. That goes here around the five years first.